Good evening. Welcome to tonight's Late Show. Um, Tim Vince and myself will be joining you for the next 50-odd uh, minutes, and we're going to be talking about uh, what's happening in the Middle East. Now, there's lots to be said. There's lots of uh, viewpoints that are so opposites. Um, but we want to look at it uh, from a perspective of perhaps someone on the inside who is uh, a Palestinian and someone who is actually... Um, made up his mind over a period of time that really he didn't like what was happening to his people, the Palestinians, and yet he was the son of uh, Hamas, one of the main leaders. Tim, what, what history do you know there? Uh, well, he, he's the son of Sheikh Hassan uh, Yusuf, who was the founding and most popular leader of, of Hamas, and he was the oldest son he was the heir apparent. He was right in the heart of the early, you know, strategies and planning of Hamas. He even spent time in the interview that you show. He he spent time, you know, with suicide bombers. He knew all the Palestinian leadership. So it's not he's not just any old bystander. It's a very powerful personal witness of what happened. Yeah, and we'll be breaking that up into segments. So and just with short breaks in between, but it's so powerful. And uh, I have to say that he is so brave because to actually expose himself in the way he has uh, is uh, outstanding and very selfless. Uh, but Tim, I thought it'd be really good because God's heart is for Jew and Arab to live in peace. Mm. And we know that since the time of Abraham with Ishmael and Isaac, there's been this family divide. And in fact, the, but they are brothers, are they not? Yeah, and uh, God's hearts, we've got so many scriptures about his love, his care, all are created in his image. Uh, by the way, President Biden used that in his speech, can you believe it, um, in Israel. So we, we have a, um, a wonderful verse, it's Isaiah um, 19, verse 23 to 25, and it's talking about there being one day a, a peace between Egypt, a threefold peace between Egypt, Assyria, and Israel being the third. And one has to say that Gaza isn't mentioned in that uh, scripture, and of course Hamas and the terrorists aren't mentioned because you wouldn't have peace while they're on this highway between Egypt and Assyria. It goes straight through the, the land that is now known as the Gaza Strip. Mm. Well, other scripture that really I'd like to, you to start mm. with is one that we had this morning. If anyone sins because they do not speak up when they hear a public charge to testify regarding something they have seen or learned about, they will be held responsible. And, and the bottom line of that very profound verse is that uh, we're all responsible, you and me, the media, the son of Hamas. If you see something that's not right and you don't speak up and, and call it out, you're culpable, you're responsible. Right. And in, it's a sin. Well, let's say yeah. you're culpable and you will pay the price for it. God will hold you accountable for not saying and speaking up and standing up. And I think that's where Revelation TV actually comes into its own because we have to speak out. It is something that we uh, are compelled to do. It's not something we enjoy doing. Um, but let's have a look at the other scripture as well, which is the one where it brings us hope, where there is going to be a coming together of Jew and Arab and also the Gentiles, if we believe in Christ. But let's have a look at what Isaiah prophesied in chapter 19. It says, In that day there will be a highway from Egypt to Assyria, and the Assyrian will come into Egypt, and the Egyptian into Assyria, and the Egyptians will serve with the Assyrians. And in that day Israel will be a third, along with Egypt and Assyria, a blessing on the earth. This is a combination of all these people groups which are at loggerheads with each other. The Almighty will bless them, saying, Blessed be Egypt, my people. Thou, that might come as a surprise to many. Assyria, my handiwork. Oh, wow. And Israel, my inheritance. Wonderful. Powerful. So, so three Isaiah. equally respected, but three, uh, 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 there's a different emphasis of God's, you know, love and his provision 
And, and sometimes people are jealous, you know, even in a family, you know, with siblings. Oh, they've got something different to me. And they, but actually, that doesn't mean that God doesn't love them all, which yeah. he does. Yeah. Well, we know in the beginning, when we look at the history, we can see the uh, animosity that grew uh, between um, Ishmael and Isaac. Not be because they themselves felt it, because they were just brothers and just got on so well, as the scriptures would tell us or believe us to, uh, to be the case. But it was over a period of time and over thousands of years, this animosity grew and this hatred, mm -hmm. I would say more from the Arab to the Jew yeah. than the other way around. Yeah. And uh, we can see that through history over the 3000 years um, of uh, our modern And now history. it's all almost sort of metastasized like a cancer that's mm. spread through the whole of the Arab world. And, and you, you can see this hatred that, that means that they will automatically um, uh, uh, buy a story, even if it's not true, if it's anti-Israel. Yeah. It's sort of, that's the one thing that unifies the Arab and Muslim world is, is opposition to Israel, even though they may be divided one to the other. Yeah. Now, I, I would just like to show the book um, as well. This is something, Son of a Mess, which uh, is a gripping account, it says, of terror, betrayal, political intrigue, and with, what's that say? Unthinkable choices. Yeah, because um, the revelations of this son of Hamas is outstanding, as is in, own, in his own words, he's going to be sharing just how Hamas uses its own people, the Palestinians, to suffer in order to achieve Hamas's own cruel and vicious goal, which is never to have a two-state solution. And what is more revealing is that this son of Hamas speaks highly of Israel's uh, and Israelis, and their endeavors to seek peace with the Arabs and the Palestinians. This, I've never ever seen anything like this. And we actually uh, did this interview some time ago, but this, it stands so pertinent to today in telling the truth, um, because there is never gonna be peace in the Middle East whilst Hamas and the likes of Hezbollah, etc., will, if you like, use their own people to their own ends politically and never br bring about a peace. Um, from the river to the sea, let's not mess around. That was on um, this, the saying or, or the slogan uh, for last week's um, mass uh, sort of mass you know, was it? And people are going around, you know, parading the streets of the capitals of the world, repeating that, which basically means eradicate the Jews yeah. from Israel. From the river Jordan, to the Mediterranean Sea. No messing around. But let's have a listen, uh, perhaps, to this very first segment that we're going to be looking at tonight. And here we go with it right now. I was uh, born uh, as a son of a Hamas leader. Uh, that was uh, by birth, not by uh, choice. Uh, in the Palestinian territories, uh, in the jungle of uh, uh, Palestinian faction chaos. You know, there was no order, there was no con constitution, no government at that time. And uh, people were full of hatred, you know, they wanted to blame somebody uh, on their uh, misery, uh, which was basically uh, the outcome of uh, the uh, uh, Arab world's uh, uh, misleading uh, leadership that led Palestinians from disaster to a disaster. Uh, and uh, Palestinians uh, and or the victims of this conflict uh, in, within the territories uh, thought that Israel was their problem. They did not see that Yasser Arafat in Tunisia, you know, profiting from the conflict was actually their enemy. They did not see that uh, uh, other uh, Arab leaderships who did not want to uh, uh, reconcile with Israel and recognize Israel uh, as an existing uh, regime and coexist and live with Israel were responsible for the misery of the Palestinian people. They still don't see this. And it was part of this uh, uh, delusion, you know, that Israel was uh, the cause uh, for our uh, misery. Uh, and suffering. Uh, so we grew up, you know, uh, buying uh, hatred and uh, projecting uh, hatred. Um, 
eventually, and the story is long, you know, how I came uh, to a place where uh, uh, I saw uh, a higher truth. And uh, uh, I disagreed with the uh, majority of the Palestinian people, which came at very high uh, uh, personal expense. And I uh, choose to uh, stay an honest witness for my own truth. I'm not promoting uh, for uh, Israel. I'm not uh, uh, speaking on behalf of Israel. Uh, I'm not uh, an advocate uh, of any crowd or nation or party. Um, it just uh, my sense of responsibility uh, towards, uh, first of all, uh, my people, uh, the ones who have not experienced what I experienced within Hamas leadership, uh, within uh, the Palestinian uh, organizations. I was very close uh, to uh, the leaderships of most Palestinian uh, uh, leaderships, including Marwan Barghouti or Yasser Arafat, uh, my father, uh, Hamas leadership in Gaza, even Hamas leadership in Damascus at that time. Uh, and I'm very familiar uh, with their minds, uh, with their ambition, uh, and uh, with their mistakes, how they uh, misled uh, the Palestinian people uh, and uh, guide them from a disaster to a greater uh, disaster throughout uh, uh, the, the conflict. Uh, I'm a, an individual. Uh, I reshaped uh, myself the way I wanted uh, even though the majority of my people uh, disagree. But uh, Israel, to me, at the end of the day, is, is, is a de democratic country. And I prefer uh, a democracy uh, over uh, 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 dictatorships. And I think uh, Israel is the, uh, uh, the only uh, true democratic model in, in the region. Uh, I'm not affiliated with politics. This is not a political statement. Uh, this is a fact, and this is a reality. And what we need actually for the region uh, is more models of, of, of Israel. Uh, actually, we would like for uh, surrounding countries to learn from Israel. Uh, I believe it's the, uh, it's not I believe, actually, I know. It's the light of the region. Because democracy, dialogue, uh, human rights, um, uh, women's rights, animal rights, uh, and so many other uh, ethics and uh, uh, values of uh, the uh, uh, Israeli uh, constitution uh, makes uh, the country uh, advanced and uh, livable and uh, people from every path of life uh, can coexist with each other. There are Arabs in Israel, you know, they're citizens of the state of Israel. They have rights, they have members in the Knesset. Uh, even though they don't serve uh, in the army, even though they don't uh, 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 do all the duties that uh, other citizens uh, do uh, in the country, they still have rights like any other citizen in the country. And this is remarkable. Um, where are the Jews of uh, the Arab countries? You know? Well, there are uh, mosques, and actually Israel, in it, within its own capital, Jerusalem, does not interfere with the Muslim sites. They're run by Muslim regimes, like uh, the Jordanians are responsible for the Islamic sites and mosques. And Israel does not interfere and give them absolute freedom to worship, even though they take advantage and they do violence. But in the meantime, we look, let's see how many synagogues, you know, in the Arab world. Where are the synagogues in, in Jordan, in Iraq, in Saudi Arabia, and other uh, Gulf uh, countries? <clears throat> so practically, there is nothing. There are no Jews. You know, and the, 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 the world talks about 
the uh, Palestinian refugees. And we ask question, you know, well, how about the Jewish refugees, you know, who left everything, their property, their gold, their money, uh, and they lost everything. And they were uh, 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 replaced uh, uh, or relocated somewhere else. What about those people? Aren't they people? Uh, so uh, there is definitely a uh, double standard uh, in, in the way uh, we are discussing uh, the, the reality of the Middle East. Absolutely. But how did you come to this mindset? Because that is an extraordinary transformation. Uh, you know, you were the, uh, and still are, the uh, son of one of the founding members of Hamas. You know Hamas inside out. You know the Palestinian leadership. You know how that you were poison your mind was poisoned to believe such a narrative. Uh, and, and now you have a completely different perspective. What was the trigger that, that actually transformed your mindset and saw the truth as you see it? It's by observation, you know. This is what uh, science is all about. You know, we observe and we make sense of what we see. Uh, and uh, there are facts. You cannot deny them. You know, of course, people in their political delusion, they can deny things, you know, and they can accuse Israel and they can uh, praise uh, the uh, predator, you know. Uh, the people can say whatever they want to say. I am responsible uh, for my uh, words, and I speak with the authority of my experience and uh, first-hand observation of the reality, knowing Hamas leadership, knowing Palestinian authority leadership, and knowing that they are the enemies of the Palestinian people. Israel cares for the Palestinian people more than their own leadership cares. You know, actually, Palestinian leaderships want Palestinian people to die. And that's a reality. It has been like this for so many years. They, there is no need for them if people don't die. And every now and then, they start a war. So for me, you ask me what triggered that? It's an evolution. You know, it's like we grew up uh, witnessing the first Palestinian Intifada. And during the first Palestinian Intifada, you know, I, I was next to a cemetery. and. Uh, we witnessed death on a daily basis. And as children, we thought Israel was responsible for that. Uh, not uh, knowing the truth that Palestinian leaderships sent children, instead of going to schools, they forced them to go and confront with the IDF. Uh, and uh, they sent uh, suicide bombers. And they sent uh, all type of uh, uh, individuals to commit uh, terrorist attacks, killing civilians. It started by stabbing with a knife, with a gun, and eventually it became a suicide uh, bombing uh, attacks uh, with the name of nationalism. That by doing this, we're going to emancipate ourselves from what's so-called occupation. Now, the question is, does any Palestinian leader really want the Palestinian conflict to end? If the conflict ends, they don't profit anymore. There is no need for them anymore. This is why they ask for impossible things, that they actually, there, there is no solution uh, for their uh, political ambition. There, there is no satisfaction. Nobody can satisfy them. And they know this uh, truth. But by sending people to die, the world has to pay them off, you know? And uh, this is the fuel uh, for their uh, uh, endless uh, cycle of, uh, of violence. Now that's the end of our first segment. Several more to go. Tim, what did you get from us out there? Um, great question from Simon saying, how did you come to this position? He said, by my own experience, by observing the facts. And that's how you came to it, that's how I came to it. And I, I do think, you know, you, when you've actually experienced and been to Israel and seen the reality on the ground, you can't be hoodwinked so easily. Good point. Oh, well, let's go to the second segment straight away because there's so much more to learn uh, from Musab. And uh, I think you'll find it even more revealing. Have a look at this. Uh, so now, observing such uh, a reality and seeing, by the way, the vacuum 
and the gap between their lifestyle and the children of Gaza and the people of Gaza. Uh, on one hand, you know, they, uh, they're full of corruption. They uh, spent uh, the public money that they collect by the name of the victims. They spent it, uh, and the, the, the world knows how they spend it. Uh, yeah, is it something like 65% of the uh, residents of Gaza are living in, under the poverty line because of the uh, totalitarian regime of, of Hamas in Gaza? Right, you know, it's like all, all the funds that come to Hamas in Gaza, they're invested in building tunnels, you know, and building a, a military wing rather than bringing uh, uh, milk to the children of Gaza. <clears throat> right now, you see, it's like the, the reality. This is how I, I, how I observe it. Uh, I don't know how uh, intelligence services see it. I don't know how the donors uh, in the European Union see it. And I don't care how they see it. For me, I see Mahmoud Abbas cutting electricity from the Gaza Strip, cutting milk, medicine. And now the situation in Gaza Strip at the edge of another conflict. What I see, Mahmoud Abbas wants Hamas to attack Israel. So Israel will attack Hamas. As outcome, children will die. So this is the uh, Palestinian uh, leadership uh, mentality. When they don't have money, when the United States cut funds or reduce the funds from Mahmoud Abbas, he would say, sacrifice a few hundred uh, children in Gaza Strip so the world can outrage against Israel. You know, they will blame Hamas. Well, Hamas is a terrorist organization. You know, uh, it's a terrorist organization on every country's uh, list except uh, Switzerland. Thank God, I don't know why. Uh, they will blame Hamas and they will blame Israel. And Mahmoud Abbas will uh, raise uh, billions of dollars out of this uh, suffering. How he's going to spend it, I don't know. Gaza does not have electricity, does not have medicine. People are dying. Children are dying in hospitals because they don't have electricity in the hospital. They don't have medication. Uh, so the average person, you know, who don't know all dimensions of this conflict, will look at Gazan uh, children dying, and it's going to be just the exchange of a blame. You know, they just want anybody to blame. Israel is going to be uh, the party to, to, to blame. Uh, even though Israel will open its hospitals, even though Israel will ask civilians to evacuate, to get out from certain areas so they can come and deal with the tunnel problems, and Hamas will force civilians to stay. And in their ignorance, they will stay. Then there will be, uh, there will be uh, civilian uh, casualties. In, instead of blaming Israel, you need to blame the party that used civilians as human shields. So this will bring us again and again like for like how many dimensions to this conflict and how it's played by infinite forces of existence that does not even start with Mahmoud Abbas and Hamas. Mahmoud Abbas considered, you know, the moderate Palestinian uh, leader. You know, his partner. His partner, he's a criminal. Uh, but of course, uh, he, know, he knows how to get away with it. He knows how to manipulate the uh, international uh, uh, public. So much more to come, but let me go very, very quickly. Tim, um, what about the money that was always raised uh, by the various groups um, to help uh, the Palestinians? Yeah, so it amounted to about a billion that was given to Arafat when he set up the Palestinian Authority. About 250 million went missing. Now that money was given by the EU, the IMF, the US, but each of them said, that 250 million that went missing isn't the money that we gave, so we're not going to investigate it. And Chris Patton said, we need an investigation. He was the EU commissioner. We need an investigation like a hole in the head. In other words, we're not going to bother. Wow. OK, but we can see uh, as we listen more uh, to Yusuf what it is uh, that he has to say about his own people, sadly. Iran has something to do with it. Saudi Arabia has something to do with it. Uh, Qatar has something to do with it. Um, and we need to see, you know, 
that money is the main cause for this conflict. And for the international community, instead of investing uh, in the Palestinian Authority, in the predator, they invest in the enemy uh, of the people. They should invest in the people directly Absolutely. by building economy, by building infrastructure, by educating them, by giving them some hope and some relief. You know, I, I don't think uh, a sanction against civilians in Gaza Strip will uh, force Hamas to, uh, uh, to uh, actually uh, reconcile. When it comes down to um, your own uh, <coughs> personal experiences, uh, Mossad, particularly uh, the fact that you have saved thousands of lives by being uh, an informant uh, for Israel's Shin Bet, you provided intelligence that prevented terror attacks and the assassination of Israeli leaders, and um, you know your contribution has been absolutely incredible uh, to actually saving lives. Um, why did you make that decision to become uh, an informant uh, for the Shin Bet and for Israel, then your enemy? Um, as I told you, you know, this is a long uh, evolution. You know, it did not happen uh, overnight. Uh, the, this uh, very strange uh, phenomena called uh, the Middle East kept on unfolding itself in a very uh, a strong uh, way that I could not deny uh, the uh, truth that I have been witnessing. It's not over yet. And uh, the state of confusion, you know, created uh, uh, in the world because of this uh, conflict. The more I witness, the more I observe, the more I'm certain that uh, we are all responsible in a way or another for this conflict. It's a, a, a dependent existence and every party has something to do with this. And this is why I don't like blaming Israel, you know, it's the easiest thing to do. You know, just blame Israel, what's so-called occupation, which is non-existence. And I say non-existence because Palestinians has the, uh, or have the opportunity of uh, being independent. And Israel will definitely help them. Israel has no interest of controlling the Palestinians' uh, lives. They don't take taxations from them. They don't need nothing from the Palestinian people. Actually, the Palestinian people take a lot from Israel. And Israel is willing to give more and more to help them on uh, every level. So again, this will, uh, uh, there is no direct answer to you know, what really, uh, uh, what was the event that made me believe that Israel is not the problem in the Middle East. It's, uh, it's more of a, a chain of events. And those events are not over yet. We will live, I will live, and we will witness more and more uh, of this uh, uh, truth. That Israel is not the enemy of the Palestinian people. Israel is not the enemy of the Arab people. Actually, Israel has the power to invade, destroy, most of the uh, uh, Arab capitals in a matter of uh, hours, you know, if, if, they, if they want to. But they are not doing it. If, it wa if the picture was the opposite, if any Arab country had the power Israel has, they wouldn't hesitate of destroying the state of Israel. Israel is always at defense, always. 99% of the wars that happen between Israel and Arabians Israel was at defense. And possibly the only time it launched a war against uh, Egypt, it was also in the understanding of defense. So the world can go on uh, of denying this reality and this truth. Uh, but we all will pay a price. 
And uh, it's time for us to take responsibility, to choose, you know, which side, you know, and I'm not talking about side of t taking side of Israel as a political regime, but taking the side of a successful model that respects uh, the uh, human uh, dignity, respects uh, uh, the human rights, and open for all type of, uh, of people, for all uh, uh, religions, you know, we have all religions practiced in the State of Israel. And this is another reason, you know, if you ask me why. When I look at Israel and see uh, Christianity practiced uh, freely, uh, Islam is practiced uh, freely, Th there is a civil constitution that has the upper hand. This is the model that I would like to see in other Arab countries. In the, in the Arab world, the upper hand is for the religious authorities. It's not for a civil constitution. It's to the uh, culture and the unwritten law. This is not good. This is not going to help the human evolution. We need to uh, understand that this is against the involvement of individuals in the Arab world. This is another reason why uh, I choose uh, to believe in the Israeli model, in the democratic uh, model. In the Arab world, they teach people to believe. In Israel, they follow the Western model of education. They teach people to doubt. And I like to teach people and the, the generations to doubt, not to believe. To believe in uh, theories and uh, in, uh, this is why we have all this problem, you know. Uh, uh, self-deluded people who go and blow themselves uh, up, you know, thinking that they're going to go to paradise. You know, it doesn't get darker than this. This is the problem of belief. Uh, so, there are so many reasons that make me um, uh, accept the Israeli democratic uh, uh, model and I think we should not be afraid to say, uh, I'm just being an example, a model for so many people in, uh, uh, in the Arab world who don't have maybe the, uh, the opportunity. Uh, and they have uh, lots of things to lose if they say this truth, that no, we prefer democracy. Uh, but the moment they say Israel, they are going to be labeled as uh, traitors. And nobody wants to be a traitor. For me, it was a choice I made. I knew that my people will consider me as a traitor. I knew that. And it's by choice. And I'm not afraid to be labeled as a traitor because I know what I am. And I don't need the validation of the majority of our people uh, to come and tell me what you did was right or wrong. Uh, for me, I stand for my own truth, and uh, I'm not concerned of uh, the lies of uh, societies. Again, we're working our way through very quickly tonight on Mossab's uh, testimony. It's just amazing. Tim, what did you get from that? What about choosing life? That was an interesting... That's the scripture, is it not? It is, and again, Biden mentioned in his speech about Israel, they choose life. He said, let Israel live. And there's a Deuteronomy 30 came to mind where um, in verse 19, this day I call heaven and earth as witnesses against you that I've set before you life and death, blessings and curses, now choose life so that you and your children may live. And that's the point. If you don't choose your life, it's not only affecting you and this generation, it's future generations. Yeah, but life is precious. And have a look at the next segment and learn more from Yasser. Are there more people like you, Mossab? Um, I mean, we, we, you were part of an organization uh, <coughs> called the uh, Islamic Resistant Movement. There was uh, an offshoot of the Muslim Brotherhood uh, in the Covenant Charter, calls for the destruction of the State of Israel and for the genocide of the Jewish people worldwide. Um, how can other people like you 
break that uh, powerful hold that the likes of Hamas, uh, Hezbollah, Palestinian Islamic Jihad, any other kind of dangerous Islamist faction out there on the people, on your people? How can that cord be broken? Well, you have to be willing to die first. You know, you'll have to, uh, to have the courage to assassinate your ego, everything you learned, all your uh, conditioning. You know, this is a universal problem. That's the human condition that we are facing. And that's why I said I don't take the side of Israel. You know, for me, I see the uh, a cosmic uh, picture of where we at in our evolution. You know, uh, have we conquered the human condition? You know, where some uh, individuals are born in a certain environment and uh, they've been conditioned to be uh, sheep. And we are not sheep. You know, man is superior to sheep. Man has responsible towards sheep. You know, but uh, the sheep thinks that the shepherd is, is their best friend. You know, but the shepherd is basically their worst enemy. Is uh, giving them water and uh, food, uh, but eventually the final destination is the slaughterhouse. And this is the reality of uh, the, uh, the Middle East and the rest of the world. So now, in our evolution, uh, we need people who uh, has the, uh, or have the courage to get out of their sh sheephood. <laughs> and uh, this is, uh, it takes a lot. They don't have to copy me. But what we need, we need uh, people to understand and realize their individuality. That, you know, all of us have the potential to uh, uh, create our own uh, reality and decide for ourselves, think for ourselves, and eventually go beyond thinking and beyond mind, beyond conditioning, period. You know, our potential is, is much higher than man. You know, and uh, our potential is much higher than uh, political and even scientific theories. Uh, this is the type of uh, individuality I would like to see everywhere, whether if it's in the West or in the East. But in the meantime, I believe that a democratic uh, climate uh, will create uh, a healthier environment for the individuals to be able to breathe. You know, oppression, um, and violence, corruption, uh, manipulation uh, will keep uh, many people in, uh, in darkness. And yes, people are afraid. You know, I was afraid. I was afraid to go against the flow of the society. You think I was not afraid uh, getting into the unknown, uh, writing a book uh, that uh, condemned me, and uh, it was uh, like crucifying myself. So uh, I don't expect from everyone, you know, in, in that region to go on a suicidal mission like me, you know. Uh, I, wish, I wish they were. I mean, it would be a more peaceful why? place. You know, it's like, why? Because basically they, they can grow in their understanding, you know, of their individuality without having to go and, uh, and do all the extremes that I did. I don't invite people to do uh, all the extremes. But in the meantime, I'm a living example that even though I went against society, and I've done so many extremes in my life. I lived. I didn't die. It did not destroy me. And many people are afraid. I'm not telling them, go against the society. But at least, you don't have to be hypocrites. Yeah. Live in that society, but have a higher understanding. You know, and find a creative way, you know, of... Uh, living without participating and in getting involved uh, in the destructive uh, uh, process. One big question I have to ask you, I mean, um, you really have to read your, your book to understand what you went through, and, and what you went through was, was absolutely incredible. I mean, you must have been at times fearful um, that uh, you would be found out as, a, a, as an Israeli informant uh, working for the Shin Bet. But why did you decide to go public with your story? Uh, again, that's another brave and courageous decision. It's actually, you know, the daily uh, uh, duty of uh, which part of it was hanging out with suicide uh, bombers. 
and I was in a room full of uh, explosives. At some point, the kitchen made explosives, and that was part of my uh, 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 work somehow, you can call it. Uh, you want to call it a holy mission, I don't know what it, what it was, but for me, it was my way of finding uh, a suicide mother who's about to go get on a bus or a school, university, blow themselves up and kill so many innocent people, including Arabs, Muslims, Jews, Christians. Do you think suicide bomber, when they got on a bus, they asked people for their IDs or their uh, ethnicity? They just blow themselves up. Go to the records and see how many innocent people from every faith were killed. This is how I saw it. For me, it, w it was not like, you know, informant for Israel, working for Israel. As much as take a responsibility, you know, for whatever uh, my position was in that moment. But all that was nothing comparing to actually telling my parents the truth of what I was doing. Because I could have kept that for, uh, as a secret, you know. Um, but uh, by revealing uh, my actions and uh, who I am, not what my society wanted me to be. You know, my society decided for me, even before my birth, that I would be the son of Hamas, a son of a top Hamas leader, uh, to uh, go to the mosque, uh, to pray five times a day, to become a devout uh, Muslim. You know, this is the expectations of the society. And throughout my journey uh, in, in the Middle East, I shaped myself in a different way that did not uh, uh, agree with the expectations of my parents, family, society, religion, even the God. Now, this is great to, to do such a thing, but to be honest about it and not to be afraid of who you truly are and go out to the society and tell them, this is what I did. This is my individuality. I don't regret it. And I share it with you because I would like for you to see through my lenses. This does not guarantee that they will know my truth. I am the only one who's capable of knowing my own truth. This is uh, the book and revealing uh, the events of my life in the form of uh, human language that is two dimensional, that cannot defend itself is a shadow of truth. But I made it available for the individuals who are willing to transcend politics, to transcend culture, to transcend human mind, and see a higher truth of what's happening. Uh, it came from a place of love, place of responsibility. Nobody forced me to write the book. It was a suicidal mission. But again, projecting what I am in that book was much more dangerous, much more challenging than hanging out in a room full of explosives and suicide bombers. My goodness, Tim, future leader? No, no, no question. Just total integrity, openness, honesty, and no hate. He, uh, if only, if only, is someone to pray for, pray that the Palestinian people will follow his lead. Yeah, and have him in lead. There would be peace in the Middle East, along with Jesus Christ, of course, and his purposes. Have a look at this next segment, because we're running out of time. But again, projecting what I am in that book, was much more dangerous, much more challenging than hanging out in a room full of explosives and suicide bombers. Can you explain why? Because basically, you know, uh, it's, a, it's a suicidal. You crucify yourself. You know, this is what crucifixion actually means. 
It's not only by killing your body. It's actually by having the will, the courage, and the strength to crucify your ego. You know, the old me and my image in the society, what people in the society uh, perceived about me, my uh, um, public image. It's non-existence, but this is how we get along in, in every society. You know, we create a certain uh, image for ourselves and uh, we become that image. Uh, Mossab, can you um, share with us uh, your unique friendship? Um, is it with Ronan, uh, your, who you work with within the Shimbet and the close bond of friendship that, that you had with him or still have with him? Gunnar um, Ben Ishaqino was one of my handlers in the uh, Israeli intelligence and uh, the man uh, came uh, to witness uh, at my uh, uh, hearing in San Diego when the uh, American government wanted to uh, deport me. Uh, they did not uh, believe uh, my uh, narrative, they uh, used uh, the book against me and so I told you it was uh, crucifixion. Um, and uh, they wanted to uh, deport me back uh, to the uh, territories or maybe some other uh, dangerous uh, location. Uh, and uh, Gonen came out to, uh, uh, to witness uh, um, at my hearing and tell the truth of what I did for 10 years for humanity, you know. And uh, practically uh, uh, he saved my life. Uh, so uh, if you want to call it uh, friendship, it's up to you, you know. Uh, for me, this is uh, a man who uh, uh, got out of his comfort and also went against the flow of his society, against the protocols of the uh, Israeli intelligence, uh, to do the what he thought was right. Uh, and uh, to me, this is a, a very high level of uh, responsibility and a uh, very high level of uh, consciousness and uh, uh, you have to be fully aware uh, of the uh, uh, circumstances and consequences of such uh, uh, a move, you know, when an intelligence service com comes to you and say, you cannot do it, it's against the protocol. If you go to the court to witness for this man and uh, confirm what he's saying. This is against the national security of the state of Israel. And if you go, you will be responsible for that. It's a direct threat. And uh, regardless of that, he came to the court um, not concerned of the consequences. For me, this is a beautiful example, not only because he witnessed uh, at my hearing. By the way, when he got to the court, the government dropped their case. He did not even have to say anything in the court. Uh, but I saw beauty in that, I saw strength, I saw individuality, you know, that I'm not the only one who's uh, going against the flow of a society, uh, a, of the agreeable. There is also other person on the other side, and there are, you know, throughout the journey now, it's like I see so many individuals in every society that they're going against the flow of the society, against the establishment, not rebels. I'm not, I don't like rebels, you know. I'm not, I don't like the destructive uh, mentality of just hating establishment, hating society. That's not my style. I'm talking about individuals who understand uh, the dynamics of this process, they respect it, and they come up with some creative way to show strength and uh, pure uh, individuality. This, this is a man who actually speaks truth and at all costs, even taking a risk of his own life being taken and being misunderstood. I need to uh, go ahead straight away with the next segment because we're running out of time. God bless this man. 
ask you what you think of the uh, current developments taking place with, uh, with Hamas. One of them uh, knows how to play on a global uh, level. Uh, the other one knows how to play on a local uh, level. Uh, and uh, both of them are just uh, uh, opposites uh, that they serve the same uh, uh, cause. So I don't have respect uh, for any of them. Uh, I don't want to take it farther and sound very extreme when I say I don't respect any politician. Um, but this is the reality of, uh, uh, of the Middle East. And those are very dangerous uh, players. And without conflict, they don't exist. And this is the time for the uh, uh, world powers uh, to realize uh, their game. There is an alternative. And uh, instead of investing, you know, saying, okay, we invest in Mahmoud Abbas versus Hamas, this is what they want. You know, Mahmoud Abbas wants to look the good guy. How? By making Hamas look uglier. You know, the uglier Hamas looks, the more terrorist they are, you know, the more moderate he has become. So <laughs> I don't think he's better. He do, you wants, think, he wants, do you think this will lead to a, a third intifada? Um, and, it, we, and, and, as I said, we are, we are at the edge. Yeah. And do, do you think that President uh, Trump, who's taken a completely different approach to his uh, predecessors um, in uh, confronting this situation and actually in a way saying that, uh, you know, we, we, I recognise as, as the President of the United States uh, Israeli sovereignty in Jerusalem and it's important to get Jerusalem off the table and just to tackle some of these issues that the West has turned a blind eye to for decades. So that is the incitement of your people to hatred and violence. Yeah. That is funding mass terrorist organization to carry on and, and fuel the conflict rather than coming to a genuine peace process and not engaging with the people on the ground at a grassroots level that can actually are the people that make peace. This might sound right now that I'm uh, pro-Trump. But also, I'm not afraid of uh, whatever uh, That's people, quite people are going to think. <laughs> I think he did the right thing. I think he did the right thing. Because uh, Mahmoud Abbas and the Palestinian uh, leaderships, uh, they just find uh, impossibilities. And they try to... Uh, to convince everyone that they are possible. Like, for example, Jerusalem is one of them. The reality on the ground that Jerusalem is the capital of the state of Israel. You know, it is, it has been. And uh, this is the reality on the ground. The fact that the uh, uh, American uh, embassy is in Tel Aviv does not make uh, Jerusalem uh, if you go there, you're going to see that the uh, establishment, the authority on the ground is Israeli authority with the majority of Jewish people in the, in the city. Uh, now, Palestinians want to reverse time, you know, maybe in uh, some uh, Hollywood uh, fic fiction, uh, maybe we can uh, reverse uh, time and travel back in time. But in reality, we cannot travel back in time. I think uh, we need to accept the reality on the ground. Uh, and this is the easiest way towards uh, peace. But Palestinian leaderships want the impossible. Why? Because they want the conflict to continue. The American uh, current uh, uh, administration uh, want basically to get them out of this uh, uh, endless game. Come back to reality. And uh, instead of uh, living out in your I idealism, you know, out there far, far away, come back here and see the reality on the ground. It is the capital of the state of Israel. So once you take the card 
uh, of the table, which basically uh, living in uh, falsehood and living in uh, uh, false uh, hopes and giving public false hopes that, you know, uh, we are not going to uh, be happy, uh, live freely without uh, Jerusalem as a capital. Really? Is this, you know, so is this the biggest concern of the Gaza children? They need medicine, they need food, they need education, they need the infrastructure, they need uh, uh, freedom. They don't need stones and just like another territory, you know, it's like uh, Jerusalem cannot guarantee the happiness of the Palestinian people or their freedom. So this lie has to, to, to come to an end. And this is why Mahmoud Abbas is, is very mad, you know. They want to fight for something that cannot be achieved. Okay, you can see the full uninterrupted interview on YouTube, the son of Hamas, full version. Thank you very much for watching uh, Revelation TV's uh, Late Show, uh, and God bless you, and may he reveal his spirit to you.